So I was just notified that I'm going to be evicted from our home. This home is paid for. There is nothing that I owe anything. I, all the taxes are paid up. Then I'm going to be evicted. <laughs> I like sitting out here on the porch on a rainy day. If you haven't ever seen, I have see-through ceiling, roof, whatever you want to call it. Of course, in the summertime, all this is shaded by the trees. But I sure do like that. You can buy that stuff from Home Depot. So to give you a little history, background on this thing, there's a, this is actually kind of a complicated story, so I'll try to be as detailed as possible without dragging this on forever. So a couple years ago, we bought this property. I guess we're coming up on three years now. We bought it for $4,200. There was a trailer frame here. That's what this house sits on, is that original trailer frame, mobile home trailer frame, and extended all the way out to those cedar trees back there. Well, we cut it down. We took all the trailer mobile home off. It was all falling down. And if you ever want to see that, you can go to my YouTube channel. And right there at the top, it'll be the first day on off-grid or something like that. It's the uh, intro video to my channel. And you'll see the mobile home. It was all falling down. So This is the trailer, the infamous trailer. It's a mobile home that has been demolished. As a matter of fact, when Google Earth drove by a couple years ago, this was more, there was more here than what uh, there is now. I have looked for the sewer pipe the best I could, and so far I have not seen anything that resembles a sewer pipe. But there is a lot of sewer drains like this. So I'm sure they were there's sewer somewhere, but uh, I can't find anything. But once I get this cleaned up, I might be able to stumble on it a little better. We're assuming there's a septic tank here, but we don't know. The guy even said he didn't know if there was a septic tank here. He didn't think so. So there may not be. We'll just see. And if not, then we'll compost our waste like we've been talking about. It's not that big of a deal. So anyway, we're going to strip this all the way down to the frame. What I find so interesting is they make these trailers out of two by twos. And these two by twos are still in pretty good shape. Uh, so I might be able to use some of these two by twos. There's a toilet over there. I looked underneath the toilet. You would think underneath the toilet would be where the sewer pipe was, but I couldn't find it. We're going to clean all this up. Just, you know, take our time and clean it up the best we can. And that's where we're going to build our tiny house, right? Probably right here, back here in the shade. So we got it all cleaned up, got the property all cleaned up. And then we started building the tiny house. Now we did this over probably nine months. So we were living in the camper. We took the camper off the back of the truck and that's down the hill. And I was building the tiny house. Well, we started with the floor and that was real early. We got started on the floor. We used a lot of materials from the trailer that got us started on the floor. We were able to use all those two by fours. And a lot of this was material that we were able to buy secondhand. Not that it was used, but it was during the pandemic and materials were really high back then. And so we were on Facebook Marketplace looking for windows and doors and we found OSB, real cheap. I think it was $9 a sheet, it was real cheap. Maybe it was $7. Well, during that time, there was a guy in Tennessee, well, there was actually a couple different scenarios. Uh, a guy in California was the first one, called me in. And these guys are pretty clever. They can find you based on little tidbits of information that you talk about throughout your videos over a series of times. I, I don't know how they find me, but they go and track uh, your records, city level or whatever, I don't county level. The California guy found me and he called the, boy, it's been a long time. He called somebody from the county, one of the inspectors. Now, we live in an unincorporated area. We live outside the city limits, so we weren't really affected by any of this. Of course, now, we were just building the tiny house without any permits because I'd read in the permit book that it was under 200 square feet. You didn't need a permit. So the, the inspector comes over and he says, this guy from California called. He says, I don't understand how he knows you, but he called and said that you're dumping sewage in the creek down there. And I saw it's probably my YouTube channel, so I explained all that. I know somebody's going to say, oh, never let anybody on the property without a warrant. Well, just to be clear, I'm kind of glad I did let him on the property because things really went well for me from that point forward. So we went down to the creek and I showed him what we were doing. Uh, we have a septic system here and uh, we were 
composting, well at the time we were incinerating our waste. Yeah, I was able to show him everything. He was, oh, that's fine. Of course, he saw the floor being built. He says, oh, what are you doing? Building a little, little shed or something? I said, well, we're, we're building a tiny house. And he says, oh, that's great. He says, doing it on that trailer frame is a really good idea because now it's not a build, it's a remodel. As long as it has a tongue on there and the, and the wheels on the trailer frame, it's just a remodel. Well, I thought, hey, that's great. I'll use that excuse instead of the one I was using. And he said, yeah, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to come out and bother you. You're out here in the unincorporated area. Well, a few weeks later, <laughs> coincidentally, another guy called me in from Tennessee. Well, this time, the sheriff shows up. And he says, can I see your permit uh, to build this tiny house? And I said, I don't need a permit. He says, well, of course you need a permit. Everybody needs a permit to build something. So I explained the whole thing. And I even told him the inspector that had been out you know a few weeks earlier and i said i'll go down and get the card and you can call him up he says no i know where he is now the sheriff lives down the road from me so he was just passing by just figuring out what was going on no big deal so he leaves and then the next day he shows up again he says i talked to the inspector and he said i was not aware you didn't need a permit for all these reasons that i guess the inspector gave and he says i apologize for harassing you he says, I'm going to contact this guy in Tennessee and we're going to figure out what's going on here because of the YouTube channel, you know, the whole thing was explained. Well, ended up, that guy got arrested for making a false statement. And I made a video about it and I even said that the sheriff and the inspector both asked me to suggest on YouTube that I tell you that what I'm doing is legal and if you intend to call me in and make the police officers do things that are not necessary because I'm completely legal that they'll get you for making false complaints or something like that so things have settled down since I've done that nobody has really called me in well we finished the tiny house and we've been living in here what this is coming up on our I guess this is coming up on our full second year I don't know second or third year we're coming you know it's in rotation we've been really happy here nobody's bothered us we have our no trespassing sign and nobody bothers us. It's really interesting. Before we put the no trespassing sign, uh, everybody was coming by, introducing themselves. One guy told me what I could do, how to build the tiny house. And uh, I was worried that somebody was gonna come down here and get hurt. So I put no trespassing sign up. Nobody's bothered us since. And I'm pretty sure I'm probably the talk of the area. Oh, those guys are over there, don't do it, you know, whatever. So, and I'm fine with that, cause I'm a recluse. Just leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. I won't bother you, I won't harm you, I won't do anything to affect your life, just don't affect my life. And so I feel like this is pretty much freedom. How can you beat this? I can do whatever I want, I can live off grid, I can use my wood stove, I can live in a tiny house, I have no bills. The only bill I have is the insurance for the truck and two cell phones. So the other day I get an email from somebody and they're telling me that it's kind of complicated it was a long email and he was very angry and he is obviously a type of person who doesn't believe in freedoms he believes in security and safety and he wants to be safe safe from the idiots like me and only way that you can find safety is through government so he informs me that he's trying to find out where I live so he can report me to the officials because I'm living illegally. I'm living in a house that should be condemned. Now, obviously, I didn't have to follow code. And so there were some things I was able to take shortcuts on. You know, he said that my, uh, that I said in a video sometime, which I never have, that my electric system is screwed up. No, my electric system isn't screwed up. And he said, I quote you. Well, no, he's not quoting me. What I said was, is it doesn't fit code. I run it from a 12 volt to 110 inverter. There's no code in the world that's gonna let you run that. And then you run it up to, from the camper to the, to the house. No, they're not gonna let you do that. That doesn't mean it's screwed up. It just means that the government didn't sign off on it. And isn't gonna sign off on it. And that was the advantages of being able to live in a tiny house. So he says that he's going to uh, have the government evict me from this condemned house. This should, it's gonna, they're gonna have it, he's gonna make sure it's condemned and they're gonna evict me from it. So he says, I want freedom over responsibility. 
No, that's, not, that's absolutely not true. As a matter of fact, I take on full responsibility for my freedom. And here's a perfect example. I've said in videos in the past that if this house start, catches on fire, I will not call the fire department. And I actually, although I can't prove it to you, I've proved it to myself that I won't call the fire department. Years ago, when I was living in a house, a mouse had chewed through the wiring and caught the attic on fire. And the electric box, the breaker box, the entire wall, it was in a closet. So I didn't have any electric. It had busted a, a water pipe also. So I had to go out and shut off the water. Well, so I didn't have any water now. <laughs> so I took the dog bowl and I splashed it up on the uh, wall so I could get in there so I could isolate the water so I could go back out and turn it back on. So, so I got the water isolated so there was no gushing water coming out of, of the pipe. Went back out, turned on the water, grabbed the hose, ran it through the bathroom window into the closet and I sprayed all that. And I put that out by myself. I had her go outside and make sure there was no smoke coming out. Make sure there was no flames or something that I wasn't seeing. And so I stayed up the rest of the night, that was at 2 a.m. and I kept an eye on that. But I never called the fire department. And $800 later, I repaired the entire thing all by myself. So there, I took on a responsibility because I wanted to be free from the fire department coming in and completely destroying my house because you know that's what they would have done. That's what I'll do here. Heck, I might just let this thing burn down. Build me a new one. As long as I don't hurt anybody else in the meantime. But I have two fire extinguishers. I got two in the house. That way if something catches on fire and I'm in the house, I can grab one of those extinguishers, put it out. I have a fire extinguisher in the pickup truck. I keep that one in there in case there's ever a fire in the truck or if I'm outside and the house catches on fire, I go out there, grab the fire extinguisher, put the fire out. Uh, and then I have the well and I can run water right up to the house. I mean, I got plenty of hose, hose is right here. I, I can even run it up to the chimney if I needed to and put out a chimney fire if I have to. So no, I, I don't need anybody to take care of me. As far as me selling this thing to anybody and hurting someone when it falls down on them, I will never sell it. There's no reason for me to sell it. The only person that might get this is our children, Carolyn's children, my children. And in which case I would just say in the will, that's a shed and, and just sell it as a shed. So no, we don't need all kinds of government restrictions telling us what we need to do when I'm fully capable of taking care of myself. So if you can click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the USDA banning canning lids. So if I can inspire you, to take on the responsibilities so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.